We present our paper, Complex Manipulation with a Simple Robotic Hand Through Contact Breaking and Caging, authored by Walter Bircher, Andrew Morgan, and Aaron Dollar. The human hand is extremely dexterous, and this capability enables us to manipulate objects with ease. This dexterity is partially due to our ability to seamlessly maneuver our fingers across the surface of an object, making and breaking contacts at will. Traditional approaches to robot manipulation, however, typically assume that the contacts remain static during the entire process. While this simplifies the computation involved in modeling and control, it also limits the workspace and therefore the capabilities of the hand. Moreover, this assumption is contrary to what we see in human manipulation, where the contacts are always in motion. Instead of enforcing fixed contacts, humans tend to loosely trap objects between their fingers during manipulation, a strategy known as caging in the robot manipulation community. Taking the diversity of contact conditions for human manipulation into consideration, we developed a mathematical model based on potential energies that predicts the motion of an object when the hand is actuated. By enumerating thousands of planar manipulators, we systematically developed and designed a highly dexterous hand. We present or design the Model W, a fully actuated robotic hand optimized according to the aforementioned energy model. The final design consists of two fingers, each with two revolute joints. At the base of the hand, each finger is attached to a prismatic joint realized through a rack and pinion, as to enable variation in palm width. This results in a highly dexterous hand that is capable of a vast array of manipulation tasks, all while maintaining a cage around the object as to limit object ejection. The hand is specifically designed to allow contacts to be freely sliding, rolling, broken and remade, however and whenever they should occur. Given a potential set of actuation inputs, we can calculate an energy map, shown as an overlay on the hand here. Commanding the grasp makes the object move towards the low energy region, shown here in blue. We present a large array of experimentation as to validate the hand design. First, we demonstrate the workspace of the hand with four different objects, three cylinders and one cube. Using visual servoing to close the loop, we control the object's position by servoing between four primitive grasps. By doing so, we are able to control the object throughout the majority of the hand's theoretical workspace. Next, we implement another servoing controller, but one that directs change in orientation. Here, the current cube orientation is denoted with a red hash mark, and the goal orientation is denoted with a green hash mark. Using the predefined grasp primitives, the hand is able to successfully servo the object to the desired orientation. The hand is capable of grasping a large variety of objects with different shapes and sizes. In this clip, we demonstrate its capabilities with various objects included within the Yale CMU Berkeley object and model set. The hand is shown manipulating two cubes, one rigid and one soft. The Rubik's Cube comes from the YCB object and model set, and the soft cube is made and filled with a granular media. The hand successfully demonstrates continuous reorientation of both objects, though the soft cube takes longer to rotate due to deformation from the contact forces. We also demonstrate the task of reorienting a mustard bottle prior to grasping, so it can be properly squeezed. Despite the mustard flowing from the bottle, the grasp force of the hand was tested during this task, as it uses inexpensive hobby servos. This next clip shows an orange being manipulated back and forth between power and pinch grasps. Transferring from power to pinch is challenging, as it requires the hand to push the object away from the palm. But this is possible thanks to the variable palm width of the hand. Now we present the hand under teleoperated control, aligning blocks of various shapes with their respective matching holes. Clockwise from the upper left frame, the objects are a yellow trapezoid, a green pentagon, a red rectangle, and a blue star. This demonstrates that the hand can be readily controlled by a human operator to accomplish simple manipulation tasks, despite having six actuators. Here, you can also see the top view of the hand aligning the pentagon with its hole. Sometimes pick and place cannot be successfully performed, due to the lack of knowledge about the environment or external obstacles may get in the way of the robotic arm, like the stool in this clip, and a new approach must be tried. In these cases, within hand manipulation with a dexterous hand is especially useful, as it enables precise placement of an object despite environmental challenges. Finally, we demonstrate the manipulation of freeform objects within the hand. Here, a golf ball and a squash ball, as well as a set of boating balls are juggled within the hand. This perfectly shows the benefits of designing a hand specifically for caging manipulation. That is, objects can be shuffled within the hand, constantly making and breaking contact, but because of the cage they will not be let free from the hand. 
To illustrate this even further, we now show that the hand can juggle boating balls while moving the hand around the tabletop, in other words, while applying external disturbances to the object during manipulation. Not only is the hand successful at this task, but it did not require any additional programming to the already simple control to keep the balls from ejecting from the hand. Overall, the authors are excited about this new paradigm and its utility in extending Dexter's capabilities of robotic hands. Thank you.